Would you like to say a few words? <laughs> so again, I spend most of my time, almost all my time, looking for deals, finding deals, honing that skill, because that, that's the lifeblood of our business. Like, you know, Kim's job is to basically manage the money. We got somebody legal and, and all these other people. If we find the deals, we don't need any of them. We don't need anybody to do anything. All that matters is finding the deals. That all that matters. I'm just gonna keep saying it all the time. So when we work with people and they and they don't have any deals, I always like I already said, I always ask them, well, how many houses did you go see? And you just keep saying it all the time. So that thus you find no deals. Like you have to go look at a lot of deals. Kim talked about it, it's a numbers game. It, it's not real complicated stuff. We're gonna tell you everything you're supposed to do. But I, I could, you could, Daniel could tell everything you're supposed to do. I could tell you 10, 20 books to read, what you're supposed to do. Go online, tell you what you're supposed to do. The tough part is doing it. That's the tough part, getting out and doing it. That's why that mindset is so important. Finally. <laughs> so, I'm gonna talk about specifically finding deals, what I do to find deals. There's a whole host of ways to find deals. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the things that I specifically do that we find success, the good deals, and you know, any question you have during the process, you know, we've done 15 house, 1,500 rehab, and two or 300 new construction. So we found, I mean, every week, we evaluate 20 or 30 deals every single week. They come in, you know, we've set up these networks and, and you know, we, we go to a ton of auctions, we go look at a ton of MLS houses, we, we market, we do it all. You know, we, we've got our, you know, like an octopus. We got it going all different ways. Just looking for deals, looking for deals, looking for deals. So kicking it off, Chris, tell us what type of properties are the very best kind to go after? The best, off, most profitable ones to go after. Off market deals are the best. Just this week in time, I put two off market deals under agreement for a hundred grand each. Fantastic deals, like fantastic deals. A two family and a single family. Wow. I'm gonna make, so much money on these two houses. That's just this week alone, put two under agreement. Off-market deals. You know where they came from? A contractor doing work on my house. His buddy wanted to sell his house and his buddy's sister. We're look, each looking to sell a house that they've had for years and years and years. And I, I took care, very good care of that contract. He, he, it's not like an, an actual wholesale type of situation, but I basically told him, this is what I want to pay. Whatever you can talk your friends into going under, you keep the difference. And he was very happy with that, and, he, and he's getting very well taken care of. So that's just off market, just a contract that I'm working with. We find a ton of deals with, ton of deals off market. Uh, you know, just thinking in my head, uh, the, the last one, we're buying one in Berkeley next week, off market. Uh, their cousin's a real estate agent who, who told them about me, didn't even introduce me, didn't even make the connection, just said, call this guy, he'll take care of you. And it's funny, two of the deals that I put, three deals I put on in the last like seven days, both had other people come look at the deal, more national type flipping organizations offer significantly less than I offered. The one in Berkeley, they offered 40, I'm not paying 70. 70 is a ridiculous deal, like just insane deal. And, and they offered 40, so I, and I'm getting it at 70 which I'm still, we're still gonna make a ton of money on it. So that, that, those last three deals are off market. Like, there's zero chance you can buy a house in Taunton for 100 grand on market. No chance whatsoever, or in Berkeley, no chance whatsoever. So the best deals you're gonna find are the off market deals. Just got them two, this is just in the last seven days, <coughs> to 10 days, two off market from a contractor, another one from a, a real estate agent I know told their friends about it. So that's what's, why it's important to, Meet as many real estate agents as as you can. And as many people here, like you'll be surprised. I guarantee, two or three deals will materialize in here. I bet you there's people in here who have <coughs> deals with them today that, that they would probably be looking to move. Anybody here have a deal now that they're working on it that they make? Here's one right here. What do you got? I got six lot already permitted and uh, with plan in Newton at uh, Dead End Street. Wow. Right next to the uh, street uh, Moody Street. Oh, I see. Yeah. I love you. Okay. So there's the deal. Anyone else got, any, got anything else? What do you got? Uh, small lot in Dorchester that needs to uh, move for uh, 220. That sounds like a good price. Daniel, you still here? <laughs> yes. I get an evaluation real quick on Dorchester. <laughs> what, what street in Dorchester? Uh, uh, there, there he is. Look at that. <laughs> 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 he just came playing, so he said, I didn't wait. <laughs> 
Yeah. We may need a quick evaluation on some land in Dorchester. Gentleman right here. Is it buildable? We'll do it offline. But that, yeah. So, a anyone else got something quick they want to share? Who's got a house? I've seen a house in Dorchester since I moved in. It looks very distressed in the city here. Have you looked into it? I mean, I didn't know. Call <laughs> well, Daniel. He knows well, what to do. Call well, me. We'll help you. We'll Call Mara. She knows yeah, what to do. Say, Mara's probably your girl right behind you. So, I got a car right here. <laughs> Off-market deals are the best deals to find. And they're not the hardest to find either. Real estate agents control a ton of inventory that does not go on the market. A ton of inventory. That, it, it takes a little bit of time for you to understand that and believe that. It also takes a little bit of time for you to understand and believe when I say the money, money's not that hard to find. And, and once I start working with people and then after like a few months and then like six months, they're like, yeah, you were right, money's not that hard to find. You find a good deal, you call me, you call Maura, you call Daniel, you call Dexter, we'll all partner with you and take half the money, no problem. Not a problem. So if you find a good deal and you come to a, a, a Boston RIA meeting or a Brownstone meeting, and you say, I have a, this good deal under contract, <laughs> guaranteed you can get it done with a partner. Like Daniel talked about doing your first deal with a partner, learning. I think that that's the, the, the best thing. You know, my first partner was kind of this one here. <laughs> a little iffy. Yeah. So we've got a whole list of marketing techniques. We're going to focus our conversation today on the top three deal sourcing strategies that are working for us right now. So you saw there were like 15 other things up there. We can go back and talk, with, talk about those two if we have time, and I think just by default, because Chris loves this topic, yeah, he's gonna end go up back, talking though? about those. How do you those. go back? But we wanna kinda keep focused here so back? we're not speaking too long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So real quick, I'll hit on. Networking is number one way, definitely. Real estate is a, a, a number two. And I'm not, I, that's why it's so important to get to know all, all the real estate agents. I've created this little thing in, in the Taunton area, and, it, and it's, it's, it's true that I'm like everybody's buyer. But nobody has figured that out yet. Nobody's figured it out yet. They all kind of think we're, we're exclusive. Yet I, yet I work with everybody at the same time. Like, like 50 different agents bring me deals, but they all think we're, we're, you know, we're, 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 it's just us. So that, that's kind of what that's kind of what you want to try to do is just get to know all the agents, get friendly with them, and treat them right. That that's a big part of this. Like the reason why you know we continue to just grow our network is because we always do what we say we're going to do. That's very important. So that's a little tougher when you're first getting started, but you don't want to commit to stuff and then back out. We've never backed out of a deal ever. Um, Couple auctions, maybe, but we got our money. Yeah, auctions don't really count. Though. Yeah, that don't count. That's that ten one, stuff. I think. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you want to definitely, you know, get a great reputation. That's very important. That's very, very important. But when you just start out, if, if you're new, I know there's been a how many people have completed five or more rehabs in this room? Five or more. Okay, handful. One or more. Okay, so a decent amount of people. So, and then there's a, 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 a decent amount that want to get their first deal. You want to get to know all the real estate agents in your area. And I'm telling you, if you if you do that, if you make it your business to stop going out there, when it, when and you have to look at MLS too. There's an MLS on this probably in the next slide. You got to look at MLS because that's kind of how you meet the agents. Plenty of deals in MLS are, are out there. It's competitive now, obviously, but. You, that's still where you, you meet the agents and you start to build that relationship and then they call you before it goes on MLS. Because so many circumstances, people don't want their houses on MLS. Chris, that's called a pocket listing. That's illegal, isn't it? That's what you might hear from some real estate agents, but? Uh, I believe that a seller is free to do whatever they want. Right. And I, most sellers of distressed property do not want the property on the open market. Most sellers of distressed properties do not want the property on the open market. They don't want the neighbors to see how their mom lived. They don't want the neighbors to see how they let the house go to hell. They don't want to deal with a house full of junk. They, they don't want to do that, but they don't know how to sell it either. So you either you know look at for the signs and, and make calls, or you ask a real estate agent. So many times, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals 
we purchased off market through real estate agents in what you would consider as a pocket listing. Any real estate agents here today? Anyone got pocket listings with them today? You got one over there? What do you got? What town? Sharon. Huh? Sharon. Sharon? There's a pocket listing. Does the seller want it on the open market? Probably eventually. Eventually? But pocket listings, you, you know, the, this person in Berkeley didn't want the house in the market. They, they, it, it just looked like <laughs> crap. Um, they didn't want to clean it out. That's another value you can bring is, is you take care of the clean out. They just don't want to deal with that stuff. So I'll get to the top three deals um, that Kim wanted me to focus on is your network. <laughs> your network. That's where you find the best deals, off market deals. Your network, and, and it kind of ties into real estate agents because you want real estate agents in your network, as many as possible. So when you're first getting started, what I recommend you do, and you know, I would throw MLS on there probably as number four, because you gotta do MLS too. It's a little competitive right now, but that's all right. You know, I bought a house um, in Taunton two weeks ago on MLS, it listed at two and a quarter, I bought it at two. Um, I bought another one, a, a couple recently on MLS. So they're out there. That, you know, even though I'm very busy, I still find time to look at MLS every day, every day. I look at new and price change on back in the market in, in my town. I'm a little bit lazy now. I try to just buy within like a few towns. I don't go all over the state anymore. I, we use, we've done deals in almost every city and town you can think of in, in the state of Massachusetts. We've done deals in Pittsfield, Athol, Arnhem, Westfield, Springfield, uh, Chicopee, Agawam. Uh, we did, you know, we've actually done deals out in Western Mass and never even been to the house. We don't recommend that. We don't recommend time. that. <laughs> but we, we used to be, you know, like kind of like you guys are, like hungry and, and really out there. We, we would go anywhere and do anything for a deal. Somebody called me up and said, you know, I got a deal up in Orange, Matt. Where the hell's Orange? And I'm on my way. That, that was kind of the, the way the it is. That's the attitude you have to have. Get after it. Get after so it. So with that Perfect. said, starting off, what's the radius that you, from your hometown, what's the radius you should go? When I started off, I'd do anywhere in the state of Massachusetts. When I started off, I, I, but I, I'm a, like, I was, was and am highly driven and willing to do anything for success. Like, it was like oxygen. It still is like oxygen. Now the oxygen becomes a lot easier. For me. But, <laughs> but when I was doing deals, I lived in Northampton when I first started. My first deal was in Westfield, nice and close, right? My second one, Tewksbury. And I drive and schlep myself out there multiple, multiple times in order to get the deal done, even if it was an hour and 45 minute ride, well, you know. there. I would recommend you do a deal anywhere. And we'll talk, after this, we're gonna talk a little about wholesaling, but if you've got an opportunity in, in where do you live? Springfield, and you could, Put the pieces together and make like that. Exactly. Yeah, right. I said if you got an opportunity oh, okay, in Springfield okay, okay, okay. and you an off market deal, a friend of a friend told you about a house for sale in Springfield, off market, and you could put it together and talk to a friend of mine over there I've known for like ten years, Alan Murray, and uh, put the deal together and, and, and have him sell it for you or whatever and make ten grand, why not? Gotta go look into it. Can't do nothing. Gonna leave it just die on the vine. Any opportunity that comes in, you, you you gotta follow up on it. You gotta you gotta be hungry. That's that's why that mindset is so damn important. <laughs> 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 so, how do you find a deal so far away? What did you say that again? How do you find a local team to help you if you find a deal so far away? When when I was doing deals and flipping houses two hours away, I would research in the area of <laughs> contract is, and you know I, I've always used Craigslist when I'm doing that, but I'm. Like, I wouldn't take every deal there. It would have to be the right deal. And, and uh, I actually, you know, we kind of formed a good relationship with, with a guy out in Western Mass. That's why I said I bought houses out there and never even gone to. After doing a few deals, we got comfortable with a contractor out there. So then we got to the point where we could send him the houses, he could send pictures. And, and you know, if it's a real good deal, we would feel comfortable doing it. But we bought a lot of houses out there that we just wholesale. It did nothing on it. You know, sometimes you can buy a house in Springfield for like 20 grand. So, yeah, 20 grand. It sounds like your choice. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done business in there in a while, but that, that you used to be able to do it that cheap. I'm not sure anymore. But you you want to be willing to go anywhere to find a deal. And if it's far away, we're going to talk about wholesaling, and maybe not everyone knows what wholesale is, but we'll explain it. You, you want to be willing to do that. 
So I'm just gonna keep hitting on this. Your network, you've got you'd be willing to go almost anywhere. You wanna tell everybody what you're doing. Now that we got social media, if, if you're gonna take this serious, uh, you wanna let everybody know what you're doing. And you'll be surprised at the deals that come in. People you know, uncle, aunt, dies, going into the nursing home, all that type of stuff, divorces. You wanna be the go-to guy who they call for that stuff. That's how we get a ton of our deals, through our network. And through our network, through our contractors, through their network. So that contract that brought me two deals uh, this week, that never brought me there before, and, it, and then I took real good care of him, and he said, I got another one I'm working on for you next week. He's like, the hell with this, I just find your deals, and, uh, and I make a lot more money doing all the damn work. So <laughs> you, you make it worth their while, and you just keep growing it, and, and now this guy, like many other people, is motivated to just find me deals and I just sit back because I keep growing my network. It gets easy for Chris because I keep growing my network. You want to do the same thing. I keep growing my network with real estate agents. Uh, any real estate agent in here who has an off-market deal, call me. Be part of my team and I'll be your, your buyer. So hopefully I pick up a, a couple more uh, agents like this who will bring me off-market stuff. I'll go as far as Tom. So it's in time. <laughs> I'll take the rest of the yeah. <laughs> No, I go to Ram too. <laughs> Brockton, I go to Brockton. We, we still like Brockton. We've done a hell of a lot of deals with Brockton. Brockton's a great market to invest in, by the way. A very good market. Very strong market. We've done a ton of deals, probably over 100 deals in Brockton, I'd say. Pretty good building department that we deal with, in my opinion. Uh, I don't, their inspectors aren't too wild. Dexter's so, going to be talking about a deal in Brockton. Okay, Dex is going to be talking, but we've had real good luck in Brockton. So I like Brockton. Real estate agents, you want to keep, you want to get out to them MLS houses to meet the agents. So MLS is number four here. And deals are out there. Deal, deals are out there. Like, we are intentionally trying not to do deals because we've got a big commercial project going on or a very large one so we were like we're gonna take a break we're gonna put a break on buying stuff because we've got a lot going on and they just come in because we, we've done a good job of the networking so there's tons of deals out there like I said two of the deals I was going after they called like the national companies that you you call from the billboard and stuff so they're out there they're calling them. put some of your your your, your uh, marketing out there get your network the other one is is auctions so auctions, I feel like, is almost the easiest way to get in the business. Easiest way. It's just a numbers game. It's simply a numbers game. You go to enough auctions, you'll buy a house. Plain and simple. If, if you want to buy a house. So what I find is a lot of people get started, they're scared to, get, to, to jump in. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. They're at auctions, the house gets bid up, and then they don't do anything. And then I get a lot of calls like, yeah, it, it, it went for my number, I'm like, what'd you do? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> yes? What What are most steps to going into an auction? Where you come <coughs> to cashier's checks and stuff, correct? Bring five grand. What's ten grand? Cashier's checks made up to yourself. The auction itself will tell you how much, usually it's five, sometimes it's ten. Most 90% of the auctions are five grand, and 10% are like 10 grand. Or just bring money and, and, and get up to the plate and take a swing. You can make make the check out to yourself and then you will assign it or write that check out then to um, the auction company and foreclosure. Yes. How, how often does the bank immediately retake ownership with a high bid? That My guess is 75% of the time. Yeah. Well. But 25, they don't. <laughs> so you're going to go to a lot of no auctions. big deal. Can't go to three and then say, ah, oh, this doesn't work. you got to go to 20 or 30 auctions to buy a house. Okay, no problem, that's about a week or two.